Welcome back to Metal Gear 2. So yeah, after that plot twist that suddenly gives us a whole new perspective on what happened in the first game, let's move on and try to forget the fact that um, a lot of shit went down that we didn't know and about. And one of the people who was on our side is turned evil and died trying to kill us. Even though he Easy later go. said he had respect for us. Alright, so but we got the gas mask, so now we'll just jump back here. Okay, so remember how we couldn't dist we couldn't attack the, um, the 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 sorry the um, the helicopter the IND yet? Well, that's because we had some stuff to do before. First, we have to get past the swamp. Okay, oh, look, the little kid. Uh, this little kid is actually the one who gives us a clue about that you can actually cross the swamp. Okay, here's okay, how the. Now we go. Oh, go ahead. Oh, okay. Uh, this is like this is like that. It reminds me of that segment in LA Noir where you have to be careful where you step, and if you fall in the swamp, you die. Yeah, it, it probably is. I haven't played LA Noir, but it probably is similar. Um, okay. Here's how it works. Basically, you have a path that you can go, and you have to decipher it on your own. This may look hard and bullshit at first, but it's actually not if you know what you're doing. Here's how you do it. What you do is, when you start walking, just keep walking forward until you, you suddenly get sank. But don't worry, you can just, you know, uh, press backwards and you'll go back on your on your on uh, pathway. So basically, just keep walking forward until you find out there's no path here. So, okay, now back and let's try a different direction. So basically, it's all about deciphering the the, pro the path that you're supposed to take by just consistently trying your best to try to see where you're going. Basically, there you go. It's that place from um, from Neverending Story, the Swamp of Despair. Basically, what you're basically doing here is studying the environment and trying to find out which... There you go. See, as you can see, I was able to figure this out. I didn't even, even when I first played this game, I didn't even need a walkthrough because I was actually. And the kid manages to go here. He knows the path already, too. He saw the walkthrough. True. <sighs> Sorry, I skipped that. Um, do I read it again? Yeah, I yeah, it doesn't. Go ahead. Bugs come in and out of here all the time. Thank you, Ness. <laughs> Wait, uh, did, I, did I sound like? He, he, no, but he, he looks like Ness. Although, to be yeah. fair, Jove, he looks a bit more like Nintendo. All right, uh, that door. Is, what about, what about, what, kind of incredibly similar looking. Yeah. To what about Ness his? Is um, a bit chubbier. What about his? What about his brother, Doe? <laughs> I forgot about Doe. That um, that door on the south by the screen, by the way, that we cannot open yet because we don't have the correct key card yet. Hello. Um, hey, soldier! There's a guy behind you, and oh. Nothing personal, the soldier. Don't worry, he only, uh, he only had like two days till retirement anyway. <laughs> Alright, time for a boss battle! Te uh, Teo, uh, you're up. Sure. Let's see. Oh, well, we need the gas mask, I the, guess. This, the guy's not a mouse, but his attitude kind of reminds me of one, so... <laughs> oh yeah, that's another thing. This game started the trend of having those, shall we call them, teams of... Okay. This, is, right. this is actually one of my favorite bosses in the entire series, go ahead. A visitor, yep. what a pleasant surprise, and just in time too! You're this is Running Man! Run yes, run. that's his name, Running Man. Running Man. You know, I gotta say, for a covert operation, these guys are very exuberant with their outfits and mannerisms. I was about to go for a little run! <laughs> gotta what go fast! <laughs> that's actually his gimmick, gotta go fast. I am Running Man, the world's fastest mercenary. <laughs> no man can keep up with me, even though it sounds incredibly stupid if I just say it. Sonic <laughs> Man is still a stupider name. <laughs> oh, come on, Shuri. In See for your it was cool. Now he's literally gonna do an entire lap over this area to show us how fast he is. And Snake doesn't just shoot him. And you can check out where he is thanks to the radar. I gotta give him this. Snake's of an extremely sportive guy to have not just shot him. No, no, no. <laughs> What do you think? <clears throat> uh, pretty fast, eh? But I'm just getting warmer, Doctor. So are you faster than us? Hear that sound? Yeah, That's you. nerve gas. The feed me for the gas gets to you, and you might survive. Ha, a tough luck, tough luck, pal. I'm wearing a gas The clock is ticking. Let the race begin. He doesn't Check know we have a gas mask. So, yeah. Check my spin dash. Oh, so, yeah. it's Ellie. He can't even see me. So yeah, like like Dweb's just said, fortunately we do have a gas mask, so we'll take it will take longer for him for his gas to kill us. Okay, unfortunately, Jova, we cannot defeat this guy by shooting. He's way too fast for us. Even if we manage to get near him, he'll just run away from us. Too the, tri fast for the trick to beating this guy is using proximity mines. Basically, corner him, 
basically get him into a position where he will not be he will not be able to even go anywhere without bumping into proximity mines. He'll basically just kill himself. Like huh. a complete Unless idiot. you get his, blown up by your own proximity mines. His speed will his own very own speed will be his downfall. How ironic. Well, that, how, how did you the why how did you blow yourself up? Uh because webs the proximity mines also kill me there if I go near them. Let's uh, don't worry though. I, even if I was getting on a little health, I could just eat uh, ration. I think I'm about to do it actually. Am I? Yeah. Would you yeah, mind? I need to eat my. I need to eat my chocolate. I don't think he can mind. It actually. The it, 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 music it, is. Uh... It actually is a chocolate ration. That one that I ate. So yeah. Oh. <laughs> chocolate, eh? Hmm. Oh, trust me, Joba. Chocolate is amazing in this game, and you'll see why. Use my speed against me. What's your name? Is it Shadow? Maybe. <laughs> snake. Solid snake. Snake? snake? How could this happen to me? <laughs> I made my mistake. <laughs> Sorry. Also, dude, do you not know how fast yeah, sure. snakes are? <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, snakes can be lightning fast. You're too slow. I, I, I love Snake's retort, though. Guess you weren't uh, fast enough. he that... blows up! It's a Metal Gear boss, Joe. Of course he blows up. Um... You, know, you know, Pedro, I'm surprised we actually never bother with an actual mangoose, the field guy, considering they're yeah. the natural predator of the snakes. I guess. I know, right? Um, anyway, My anyway, guess is he didn't... To... I'm, gu I'm guessing maybe Kojima probably would be too obvious, I don't know. Mm. Anyway, as I was saying, um, I don't really recall with Metal Gear 1, but I'm pretty sure Metal Gear 2 Solid Snake also started the trend of, you know, there being these bad guy teams, you know, yes. teams of uh, people you would take down. Like, yeah, they're going to be a staple of practically every Metal Gear, even the spin-offs. So. In, 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 in this Solid case, Big Boss is mercenaries, yes. And don't even get me started on Metal Gear Solid 4. Essentially, we have a femme fatale team of Amazons who are all animal-based. Yeah. Well, well, Jova, to be fair, the villains of this game have been very... Most of them pretty much almost all male, so I actually appreciate that they had an entire uh, army of female villains, so that's cool. I have no problem with all female villains. In fact, if anything, there seems to be a lack of female villains, so I am all for that. Mm -hmm. Disney's Besides, usually good. Question, Pedro. And we got Stinger Missiles! This will help us defeat the Hindi. Hey, this will come in handy also for Sniper Wolf too. The interesting, yeah, the, the, the cool, the cool thing is uh, the cool thing about playing this game after playing Metal Gear Solid One, like most people have. Immediately when I got the single mouse, oh okay, single mouse for the find the hindy, just like an MGS One. Cool. Oh crap. Oops. When you think about Metal Gear Solid One, was essentially the gameplay structure of this game being brought into the proper yeah. polygonal world. Like Johnny said, this game is pretty much Metal Gear uh, Metal Gear Solid One beta. When you get right down to yeah. it. So, uh, guys, um... Yes. Yes. Been, oh, speaking of betas... How, how about Metal Gear Survive? <laughs> there's recently a beta, and... Pedro, why don't you share with the audience your experiences with the beta of Metal Gear Survive, and show us how it truly contains the original spirit of Metal Gear, the series. Okay, uh, first of all, I'd like to say that I did... I went into the beta... Okay, like, okay, I don't like you... But I will <laughs> see exactly what you've got in here. Just uh, just for the sake of actually being able to talk about it later. So I went into it. Okay, fine. Let's see where this goes. Metal Gear Survive, blah, blah, blah. I log in and all that shit. And I go into them and start a new game. And then it gives me an option to either start in the first mission or to see a tutorial. And I'm like, okay, well, this game from what I've told... From what I've been able to see, even though it's still based off MGS5's engine, it still has some new mechanics to it, so sure, give me a tutorial. Okay, everybody, you know how literally every Metal Gear game, even the MSX ones, have tried to integrate the tutorials into the story? Like, oh, there you go, we just defeated the high D, by the way. Uh, Nobody's they, left, just shrapnel. They try to integrate the, the Metal Gear uh, so the, the tutorials with the story. For example, in these two games that we were doing, that we've done so far, um, the contact with Snake is the one who teaches him things. Like, for example, in the first one, it was Big Boss teaching him everything because, you know, Snake was a rookie back then. So it made sense for him to get taught by Big Boss and, by the extension, teaching things to the player. In here, since Snake has been out of business for five years, after being a rookie, 
So obviously, he would probably be a bit rusty, so it made sense for Colonel Campbell to teach him things off route. Not to mention, considering now he has to deal with a radar which he didn't have in the first game, also By makes way, sense. This is totally going to be his last mission, guys. After this, he's done. Swear on me, mama. You know, Jova, this is kind of like. I wonder if Hideo Kojima's. Uh, constant. I'm. This is the last one. I swear. And then return thing was also uh, uh him trying to be Solid Snake himself. So Solid Snake is actually modeled after him, sort of. That would not surprise so, me. So um. Least. So what about so what about the rest of the beta then? I was about to get to that. Okay, everybody. So you know, yeah, and like I said, every single Metal Gear does that in trying to integrate to have a, an immersive tutorial that is not boring and keep teaches the player throughout while the gameplay is going, so that the player can actually play as he's taught in a way that's not boring and very immersive. Even MG MGS5 did this also very well, the game that came before Survive. Here's how Survive handles tutorials. I click on the tutorial section, I'm like, oh, okay, let's see, maybe you'll get it into a tutorial arena or something. The moment I press tutorial, a giant list of ar tutorial articles, each of them just a boring screen with text, and that's it. That's a tutorial. Just read the shit ton of tutorial oh. articles. That's it. Oh my god. Do you know what that reminds me of, Pedro? That's exactly how Mighty Number no. 9 does its... Well, exactly. Okay, 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 okay. Not oh, all, but god. most of its power-ups. Like, so you're telling me that Metal Gear has now stooped to being on the equivalent of Mighty Number no. 9. Not just that, Jova. Like I said, Konami, Kojima did the tutorial better than this in 1987 with the first Metal Gear. This is- you're, you're doing- you're, you're doing a 2018 game, and yet you're doing worse. I- tutorial's worse, I mean. I- no, I was like, okay, so basically in order to learn how to play this game, I have to spend an hour reading tutorials. You know what? No. I'm done. Delete it. Bye. Play, Wait, time the to play some. Happy. I was okay. Okay, basically, Java. Here's I came to a borderline. This it, it was a very important decision in my life. I could <laughs> I, I could either play more of the uh, read the full. Sorry, I could either play an hour. Sorry, read an hour of tutorials about Metal Gear Survive, or I could just delete the game and get back to playing Inner Automata. So I was like, hmm, which of these two options is the correct one? I You're think chosen wisely. wisely. Yes, thank you. <laughs> So, uh, there you go, folks. Uh, Metal Gear reduced to a textbook of tutorial and whatnot. Don't and get... let's be quite honest, let's be quite honest, outside of that, from what I've seen, the typical gameplay of Metal Gear Survive... Oh, goody, the cardboard box. Uh -oh. Don't get me wrong, everybody. For all I know, maybe... Right. Sorry, go ahead. Hold on, we have to read this. It's the cardboard box. Yeah. Why not try posing as part of the cargo? I'm changing the frequency for our future communications. A new frequency can be found in a photo in the software mature manual. Over and out. All right, everybody. It'll be a moment. I have to check the manual. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. Did the PS3 um, version of Metal Gear Solid 3 actually come with a mini manual for this? It did. It, it did. Uh, unlike the PS, the original PS2 release of of the of this uh, re-release, which didn't have a manual for it. Fortunately, in the HD collection, Blue Point included um, a digital manual that we can consult. Yeah, that was kind of boneheaded to not include a manual on the PS2 version. Just saying. To be fair, they did <laughs> fix it in these, so yay. So um. And 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 and, 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 and to think the uh, and to think yeah when we eventually get to Metal Gear Survive uh, hmm hmm wh hmm what what do I not like in video games? Uh, stealth and reading a lot of stuff. Oh, Brilliant. Yeah. Don't get, don't, don't, don't get, <laughs> sorry. Don't, don't get me wrong, everybody. For all I know, may, I haven't played it. The, the, I haven't actually played the game uh, as it's made plenty obvious by now. But for all I know, maybe the game is good. I haven't played it. Maybe, for all I know. However, that's considering how this series has always had, has always been a masterclass in how to do tutorials, it just feels so. I'm. I just, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm going to play some Nier Automata. Say I want to play Nier Automata, when, thanks, bye. Let me also <laughs> say, when it comes to Metal Gear spin-offs, uh, they, they don't always have a track record. The one that's mostly savageable is, well, there are two portable ops and um, Ghost Babel. And what about Rising? But Revenge Rising, though... Joker. True, true, you're right. Uh, I got confused because I consider it more like a proper sequel. Like, like okay, 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 let's be fair. The reason Revengeance gets a lot of flack is that people make it, the mistake of trying to treat it. 
Uh, so you'll be surprised, yeah. Peter. There are a lot of uh, people who say, "Oh, because it's not true to the Metal Gear." It's and that's the thing. It's people, a spin-off. It's a spin-off. That's the main no, problem. Not, not just that. Uh, Kojima made sure that even in the um, the final draft of the game, he made sure to let the story be set uh, in the uh, after Metal Gear Solid 4 in the far future, where everything was said and done. There were no loose threads. There were no um, damaging the canon, not even retroactively. Yeah, so, essentially, Revengeance is the end of a timeline, but it's done yeah. in a way where tension involving, you know, the characters you know and love can still be possible in a potential scene. Yeah, I, I really love the Sonic cameo. Yeah, I'm more referring also to, when it comes to Bad Spin, up to the Acid games. A Sonic cameo? Sonny. Oh, Sony. Sonny. Sonny, I'm Sonny. in trouble. Sonny. I discovered my... Oh, wait, is she already playing Holly? Yeah, I think this yeah, is Yeah, she me. is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oops, my bad. Just when I finally managed to contact Dr. Mob. Well, shit. Basically, also, she, Joe, basically, uh, she, she, basically they found her out and they, they imprisoned her. Give me your location. Fun fact, originally Holly was supposed to be the female equivalent to Solid Snake before she grew into more her own character in Metal Gear Solid 4. I was blindfolded. I think it's somewhere in the tower building. Uh, oh yeah! Uh, Probably. correct me if I'm wrong, Joel, but I, it's, I admit it's been a while since I've played MGS4, but I don't think Holly shows up in any game after this, does she? No, I'm pretty sure she's in Metal Gear Solid 4. I she mean, is? she's, uh... Oh Checking wait, up. no wait. Oh, yeah, you sure yeah, yeah, you, yeah, you yeah. sure you don't you sure you don't mean the other female protagonist uh, character that she doesn't know yet? Uh Holly is the colonel's daughter, right? No, nope. Jova. You're mistaking her for the female lead of MGS1. Oops. Yeah. Okay, that's the one I'm talking about. It's supposed to originally be the female. We'll get to it. We'll get to it though. Never mind, I didn't say who it was. No spoiled. Anyway, she's describing to us. Right. Yeah. Basically, she's describing to us what she can see and what she can hear when the place she is, so that we can have a cool... And an elevator to the left. I think I've got a pretty good picture now. Good for you, Zane. Better than me. I don't think they know about my radio yet, but come quick. I'll be waiting. All right. So yeah, this is the game that also established that cardboard boxes are Jesus in terms of throwing people. <laughs> well, they, oh, trust me, Joe. Oh, trust me. Wait till we get to MGS One, where Natasha, uh, Natasha Romanko, who's the big uh, martial arts weapons specialist of that game, she gives us an entire lecture on the history of cardboard boxes and how they were invented yeah. and, and shit. Yeah, you should. Don't this don't is Metal Gear Solid cardboard. Two, Pedro. Bo cardboard boxes are Jesus. Worship. Don't forget Metal Gear Solid Two, Pedro. <laughs> where, we're, where we're literally told to treat a cardboard box like family and trust in it because it is the ultimate line of defense. Or something. Oh, it is. I mean, yeah. seriously, do you have? I mean, the, the the cardboard box has saved many a Metal Gear player all over the world. See? <laughs> see, see, this is one thing I love about Hideo Kojima. He will acknowledge how silly stuff was in, like, an older version of a game, but he won't get rid of it. He'll pretty much make it part of the canon in a glorious fashion. He's like, he's like, I yes, this is silly, but I don't care. I love it, so here you go. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna run with this. Now, I wonder when he's gonna get around to explaining in the canon... Oh, wait, that's right, he's not a part. I wonder if he, you know, if Konami hadn't treated him the way they did, I wonder how he would have explained how Quiet is defeated by a cardboard box. Uh, because well, he breathes through well, his skin. Eh, honest, <laughs> honestly, Jova, to me, it's just typical Kojima humor, giving you an extra weird-ass-ass way to kill the boss. Come on. Come on, Pedro, it's Kojima. How much you want to bet he would have eventually have come up with a canon reason for that? I mean, he's practically explained almost every single silly thing in games before Metal Gear Solid V. Basically, Shiroi, there's a boss battle in um, in MGS5. You mentioned where... that already in our Mighty Number no. 9. Oh, I did? Oh, okay. Never mind then, sorry. All right. Plastic. What got... is plastic explosive doing near children? Uh, uh, Dwebs, uh, sorry, Teo. This is a this is this is a a, a base a, a facility constructed by Big Boss. Are you really surprised by this? <laughs> it's is this a go, go ahead, for mercenaries? Um, uh, but your body voice. My mom told us to tell him if we saw a man wearing green clothes. The blonde lady says he isn't here. The blonde lady. Thanks for the tip, kid. <laughs> uh, thanks. I guess. I guess she's colorblind. All right, let's see. All right, let's see in this one. Notice, notice your radar. How you can actually see that there's someone on the other side of this. So yeah. that's a clue. So uh, use some plastic explosives. 
Here we go. There we Shoot go. Shoot the Zelda jingle. All right, uh, Dwebs. Uh, all right, Dwebs and Shiro, the stage is yours. A good old 8 bit sounding explosion. Yeah, just uh, give me a sec. Okay, I'm up. Thanks, Snake. Go you saved me. You sa you saved me. Good. Uh, dude. What's wrong? Love interest? Hold on, you'll see. I didn't think you'd be this pretty. Oh, that's right, this is the first time. <laughs> He's always remember. like this, though, isn't he? <laughs> oh, Shiroi, you should see how he tries to hit on Samus. What, it, you thought I'd be ugly? So basically, Snake's personality is a mix of James Bond with other action heroes. I should have met up with you sooner. Because he, he, she's pretty, right? Well, something's looking up. I was stalling because I didn't have any picks. <laughs> hmm. Snake, about Dr. Marv, I'm pretty sure he's okay. That uh, means he's dead, isn't it? Uh, no, he's actually not. I'm sure he's uh, fine. At, at least not yet. <laughs> she says she's sure, not certain. Pretty sure. I thought you said you made contact. Good point. Come on, Peter, press the fucking button. Um, I Thank guess you. you wanted Shiroi to voice Snake there. <laughs> <laughs> well, I haven't actually met him. He's under on um, guard somewhere. But he sent a message by Carrier Pigeon. It he, might... Of course a he sent carrier a message pigeon. by Carrier Pigeon. <laughs> yeah, we still do that in this universe. <laughs> it's well, surprisingly useful. Yeah, basically, some we, kind of clue. basically, we need to find this carrier pigeon, obviously. Mm. So let's talk to the animal guy, I guess. Very good, Jova. A pigeon? Where is it now? Hmm. The god pigeons? I don't know. I found it, but it flew away just as I was about to catch it. I saw it heading up the elevator in the tower building. Shoot. Also, we have so. Hmm? Yeah, yeah. Only Dr. Ma oh, sorry, go on. If there's anything uh, Mary Poppins told me is that your country hates feeding pigeons. Uh, yeah. uh, Teo, allow me to refer you to my favorite song in the movie. Nah, no, we don't. We don't. To be fair, we, we don't. He's the only, only one. To be fair, Pigeons, Mary Poppins is the only one who seems to advise that. Everyone else Tia, just we seems don't... to be about going straight to the bank. Tio, we feed ducks, not pigeons. <laughs> also, and... Tio, believe us when we say... We do feed pi pigeons, but not willingly. The president <laughs> oh, of the United I States is a duck. Anyway, the bad guys are looking for it. Blah blah. blah. We have to find a general clue to Doctor Marv's about about. Blah, blah blah. Yeah, we've already talked about you this. See, what Doctor Marv should have done was just send it by Amazon drone. Those are surprisingly efficient, and we haven't found people shooting them down yet. What are you going to do? Yeah, what are you going to do, Holly? I don't need to get in your way. I want to gather a little more info. I'm starting to like this place less and less, and then this happens. Well, I know, right? Yeah. I hate Mondays. So. <laughs> you, you probably should have picked a different career. <laughs> or the military should have picked a different day to invade. If this keeps up, I'm really gonna let him have it. Oh shit, Holly's gonna back heat. Same <laughs> she never appears in a later game. Oops. Don't worry, though, we'll refer to her as Hori in Metal Gear Solid 1. <sighs> <laughs> it's a good thing this game got re-released. <laughs> Otherwise, you... Yeah, 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 Pedro brings up a good point. Up until this game finally made it over to English, Lance, she was known as Hori. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, Jerry. The enemy might be listening in, so let's change our frequency to 140.76. Yeah. Okay, well, what snake? if they were listening to that, Holly? Um, and then it turns out, um... and then it turns, and then it turns out it's like like BBC Radio Eight or something. She's new to this, isn't she? Oh, here you go. She right, that's you. Oh, and I made a copy of my IC card. It's card four. Here, take it. Yay! I sure hope the enemy wasn't four. listening in on that. It's okay. It's, it's okay, Joe. But they're nowhere in the radar. We're fine. Again, again, I get her being new to this, but again, it's the same with that other female character. It's like, why didn't she just bring back Holly then? Ah, well. My guess is, Joa, that she Take wanted to keep everything new, because remember, that was like, he knew that most people would be playing that as, as their first, so he didn't want to bring in too much stuff from the previous games. I guess, and yet they still what? brought up who Hori was. 
Well, that was more so in the text summary that you can see in the menu than anything, but yeah. Uh, go ahead, go ahead, Liz. It's the kind of thing you would say to your boyfriend, he says. Before you say it, go buy kiss. But I want Snake. What should I say? Basically, I think he's asking for you to kiss him, honey. Uh, uh, fuck you, I'm not... Um, Make sure not to die. Um, sayonara, Shadow. Stay alive. Stay alive. And we'll meet again sometime. We'll Spoilers. Meet again. Yeah, this is the one for him instead. Don't know where. Don't know where. Then again, considering Samus's DNA, I guess it makes sense she'd be the only yeah. one for him. Now, uh, now go and hopefully, maybe someday I'll see I'll see someone like you and in yet twice your height. So Samus, goody. Yeah. Basically, well, she okay. will... maybe twice your height is a bit of an exaggeration, but oh, still. Oh, no, 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 by all means, Samus is freaking tall. Basically, Shiroi, uh, in Super Smash Bros. Brawl, he actually hits on Samus, so. And I it's implied aware. that their relationship may be going places, based off of some of the codec uh, go, go ahead, Shiroi. There are lots of children living in Zanzibar land. They're war orphans from all over the world. Are we going to mm. rescue them before we inevitably have to blow up this island? And yet it's, it's kind of weird that they're going to. They're just innocent kids, so they won't hurt you. See ya. You know what's weird though? We'll have to rescue them and later they'll go star on in a Christmas project. Solid Snake and um, Solid Snake and um, Smash Brothers might have actually been some kind of secret advertisement for MGS4, so basically a Nintendo games advertising a Sony one. It was kind of. Yeah. How how how's that? Nintendo once created Sony their own. Once cre helped create their own competition in Sony's PlayStation, and now they're advertising one of their own games. <coughs> Cloud in Smash Brothers. Yeah, never forget. All right. <laughs> See you for the next. Part. See you, everybody. See you.